up, world? This is the Country Rep Report. It's your boy, Big XL. What up, Richard Deuce Bank? Man, does my neck look moist? Moist? It's just, I, I don't know. about that. I feel like my neck look a little, little wet, like a little, a little, little <laughs> thick, wet, but it's okay. Well, you, you freshly shaved, though, you know, so you got that look. You got the look. You, all right, man, let's get into it. You boy, Big XL, I'm going to do Spain Lake, and you know what we do right here on the Country Rap Report. We give you our opinions on some of the hottest country rap videos in the land. All right, and if you think it's a hot country rap video and we have not talked about it, you know what? Get in the comments area and let us know why in the hell have y'all reviewed Whoop the Whoop, or why have y'all reviewed Big Bubba Jim, or what? Let us know and we'll get them. But one thing I gotta let you know because a lot of people getting at us, we only review songs that have videos. Right. Okay. That is the criteria: songs that have videos and. They have to be six months or less. Like right. so, if it if it we're right now, if we're in September, then they need to have came out in what is that February? Yeah. So, but right. six months, six months, six months, six months. If it's if if you look on your video and it says posted a year ago, put that work in, G. Put that work in, G. Mm-hmm. When when you trying to go back and get them old country rap. Throwbacks. It ain't throwback Thursday. We want that new, new, that fresh, fresh, those active artists, artists out there doing that thing and represent. All right. Speaking of doing that thing, represent, let's jump right into this thing because you know what? This artist, we've never had an opportunity to review him on the platform. So welcome to the platform, Mr. Trap House Coda. Bring your ass on out here. Let's talk well, about this joint. I, I do want to say something. Though. This episode is probably one of our best episodes music wise like all four of these songs are shit that everybody needs to be listening to and needs to be in their playlist i'm saying that now before we start the official reviews for everything else like all four of these songs need to be in your playlist you're gonna say that before you even get to the songs because we already know we're going to review i'm just telling them what to know they to look forward to so now they can see like well they'll see it in the title like oh okay so now they're gonna cut it off so maybe i'll get Heather to edit that part out of the video. Yeah, because it made it seem like it might not be no heat coming. They might not get a, oh, spank, no, they, a spank rant. They all get scared. They all gonna get that, but still, like some of this stuff is and, and I'll give my critique on what needs to and what I thought was a little under industry acceptance. But other than that, like these are these are great songs. Like they, they just need a little tweaking here or there, but all four were great songs. Okay. All right. Let's start off the right and proper way. Again, up first, Trap House Coda. And uh, I'm going to be very, very honest, man. I was excited when I seen just the name Trap House made me wonder, like, okay, okay. I haven't you heard anyone in the country rap genre use the term trap nothing. Right. Trap nothing. Maybe I heard somebody called country trapping or something. I don't know. But Trap House Coda, it just immediately, immediately drew my attention and I was ready for it. I was ready for it. I was ready for it. The name of this joint is Old Silverado. All right. For all my Silverado fans out there, you know, I drive a Tacoma, so I ain't really fucking with no Silverado. But anyway, <laughs> all my Silverado cats out there, this joint is for you. This joint was, um, hold on, I got it wrote down. I got my notes. What the fuck did you doing wrong? Okay. I'm all jacked up here. All right. Start off, man, I got to let you guys know that this joint was directed by ATF. I hadn't heard of ATF, but in looking at the video, I was very, very satisfied with its quality. The joint really didn't have, it, it's not really a theme to it, just that old backwood party type vibe, which I love. Now, I got to say this about my dude Trap House, and I think they've been listening to it, bro, because called Trap House. Got them twerkers. <laughs> he got real twerkers too, bro. Trap, they twerking the thing. Trap House got them young, 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 young. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Now, let oh, me yeah. tell you what I like. What I like. First of all, I love that. I love the hook because in my lifetime, I used to live by the three B's. Blunts, Ben, bitches. Like, so 
He talks about the three B's in the hood. Okay. Who don't like beer? Who don't like blood? Who don't like babe? Who don't? Who don't? Right. If you don't, what's wrong with you? Bitches blunt beer. Well, like, you, you, I, you, I ain't mad at me. Like I love guy. the hook. Love the hook. Okay. Also, let me tell you what I like. Right, right. I think I think Trap House Coda really has a very distinct sound that's not that we haven't heard thus far in the country rap. It's different. Matter of fact, it's almost. If I know Trap House Coda had to at some point in time be a hip hop artist, I was like, you know, I'm doing the hip hop thing, and maybe he was introduced to country rap as a genre, and he leaned that way, or maybe he just listened to a lot of those songs because the way this song was put together, it reminded me of a 2021 hip hop joint. Um, he's dressed like he's out, he hangs. But his crew looks like they just have fun. He's probably from a small town where everybody's really integrated and they just get it in. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the video and it's a girl in the video who's just dousing herself with the beer and whew. Okay, so I really like the record. I love the hook. I love the delivery and I love the singing. Do you know what I hated about this record? It ain't long enough? It's not long enough. And actually, if you listen, the second verse is the hook. There ain't no second verse, fam. Well, I think they use the hook as a second verse. But the second verse, or what will be considered the second verse, is the hook. So really, it's only a verse and a hook twice. It's a hook, verse, hook, bridge, hook, and bridge again. Yeah. Like the, it, was, it was very disturbing, just from a musical standpoint, to deal with that, especially with it being such a catchy hook. Um, you probably should have reformatted that a little bit different. But uh, um, before taping this, I did jump on his social media, and it looks like Justin Times getting on the remix. So this song was already formulated for a remix because they left the second verse really open for interpretation for whoever wanted to jump on it. I would have rather heard Bart next on it. But we'll just see what Justin Times brings to it. But th this, this was a very different vibe, and I was very open to it. I, I needed it. Um, the beat was dope. He was dope. He came with a great flow. I'm still mad it is only one verse. Um, I, I need to hear more from you. Uh, I would have liked to have heard a second, and even maybe a third verse. Just shorten your verses and do throw the, throw the hooks out there. You can do hook eight, hook eight, hook eight, and hook if you wanted to, just to extend the song and give, a little, give the people a little bit more of you. I wanted him to rap more. After the first verse, I wanted more of him, and I was pissed to the point of me having to start the song over, but now I was like, oh, you got me. That's what you was trying to do. You wanted me to replay the damn song all over again. Okay, so I did it, and I did it again, and I did it again. I really like this dude. This dude, this dude probably, and I, and I, I didn't want to say this in a negative way, but this dude's probably bigger than country rap. He probably needs to be over in core hip-hop, but will they treat him right? that way you know would he they come at him a little bit sideways because he's a white rapper and he's rapping about mud and shit you know and beer like i don't know if most folks over there could, would relate but this beat drove me that way first and then him just rapping and the, his style he's a, he's a dope lyricist i, I like him I, I really really need to hear more from him for sure I agree with that. And don't you agree, man? This video was really, really clean. ATF did that thing. For sure. There was nothing negative. I, I had, there was some product placements, but the twerking made up for that. So, you know, thank you for that. Um, and they were real twerkers. These were not people just shaking their back, trying to make their ass move. This was a, these were real, uh, they might be twerking as a profession. I don't know. Whoever that is, whoever they were, God bless you. Um, I I need a little bit more rhymes though, fam. Like don't don't just wet my appetite with something like this. As my as my first time seeing you and and I think he might have sent the video to us, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, first time jumping in and you hitting us with this and it's only one verse. Come on, son. Come on. Come you come you just made us like okay. What's the what's the rest of it? We're real excited. Like this dude this dude got it. He he got potential, but we only got one verse. 
uh, it was enough of a verse to make me go back and listen to it a couple of times because you, you got real st- real skill. So I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking out more stuff by him. All right, I just got to say this really, really quick. At the time of the filming of this show, my man Trap House Coda is doing a really, really big show, man. He's on a bill with Waka Flocka, Ghostface Killer. Um, it's an event called the Agenda Festival. So the fact that Trap House Coda is out doing the festival is really, really dope. But um, definitely if you're in the Atlantic, Atlantic City area, he's going to be doing his thing at the Agenda Festival. And that that's no feature Waka Flocka. Uh, Ghostface Killer, just to name a few. And then a lot of other artists I haven't heard of, but those are the noticeable names that um, I felt like we need to mention. But as I'm looking on social media, I don't see anything about him and Justin Time. How'd you find out about him and Justin Time? I think it was on the story, or Heather might have sent it to me and said, you know, check this out. I, th- I got the image. It's, it's around here from somewhere, but I think it might have been on. I don't know. Because if I say one thing and then y'all be in the comments like, no, it was such and such. I'm not sure where I saw it. I know that I did see it. Uh, I know I'm old and I'm, you know, sometimes I'll be a little too high and I imagine shit. But I, I'm sure I did not imagine this. That She sent it to me and it was it, it, immediately I was like, I really don't want to hear Justin Time on this. Like, why, why, why him? Like get a rapper, rapper from core hip hop. Don't get somebody from country rap. But if he's trying to bridge and get bigger over here, then I can see why he want to get just in time. But just in time, I just have hold bars though. So I mean, it, it'll be an interesting thing. Just in time needs to not disappoint this beat though, because this beat is snapping. So, so whoever gonna come on it, whether it's him or I, I, I really thought Broad Next would do perfect on it. But if it's not him, then whoever, just give me something. I I know you're a Broad Next fan, but stop yeah, trying to get him that. Stop trying to get him this look. Because this ain't the look for him. I'm sorry. You just trying to give Broad a good look because you know this song is a winner and it's out of here. Not saying Broad Next don't have Broad Next if not have a song that has this potential crossover value at this point. I'm sorry. I agree. I no, you are you're right. You're 100 percent right. So you just trying to sneak him in there because that's your boy. Right. <laughs> and you want him to get that commercial look. No. Now <laughs> I'm not mad at Justin Time for being on it. Um, but you know who I would love to hear on this record? Who that? And I was thinking about this, and I said I'm gonna mention this on this show in a different context, but I'll mention it now. Because I want to see these two guys on a song together. I want to see Dusty Lee and Austin Tolliver on a song together. So I'll throw them on the Trap House Coda remix. Mm. That would be nice. And it would be perfect because it's the same type of snap, and both of them can. Can hold that. It'll be dope. Also, Tyler will come with this little singing Nelly type shit. Like all of that. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. That's a million. That's a million seller right there, bro. For sure. Dusty sure. Lee, Trap House Coda, and Austin Tolliver, and they're going all the way to the club. Yeah, I would. I would do Austin Tolliver last for, in, in that whole co- collab that you were just talking about. Throw Dusty in the middle. Just so, because we know Austin's gonna come with singing and the harmonies and just end it with that. They'll be like throwing Chris Brown on on your remix at the end. So I think that, hey man, <clears throat> last thing I'm gonna say about about um, Trap House Coda's Old Silverado. Well, two things. First of all, because we have some very very interesting chats. So I know right now, as this is premiering, there are some people out there who I want to ask this question to you. Have you ever made love in an old Silverado? Have you? <laughs> Absolutely not. I have not. <laughs> have you? And if so, <laughs> did you make love in the old Silverado inside or back on the bed? On the back of the truck. <laughs> and that question is strictly for everyone watching the premiere right now. But if you're watching it after the premiere, just answer. Let me know, man. Have you made love in an old Silverado? And if so, where was it? In the bed or in the front seat? Because there's some big ass front seats in the Silverado. I done sat in one. I ain't made love in one, but I done sat in the Silverado. Those are big ass seats. And I thought it was funny at the end because the truck is fucked up. And it's like, that's what you give a bring the forward to a Chevy shoot. I thought that was hilarious. Right. Hilarious. Now. Well, he, he is a big dude. He, he needs them big seats. He's a big dude. Yeah. Now, last thing, and I'm moving on. 
the reason I know this is what's going on in country rap, you can't tell me Trap House Coda isn't the country rap version of Mo Ray, Rob Wave, or Derez Deshaun. He fits directly in that lane of those three artists, and those three artists are definitely pioneering a certain style right now. I feel like he definitely listens to all three of those guys, Mo Ray, Rob Wave, and Derez Deshaun. If he can get one of those guys on it, he'd really go over the top two. Well, I can help with those. Let's see if he wants to come on this side. Like, if he he can probably do either or. As it is, he's winning. Um, the video was perfect. This definitely for this demographic over here. Like, go get your money, fam. Wherever it, wherever it is and whatever it looked like, go get it. <clears throat> I don't want I don't I don't want no country rap artists coming over. I want them to force the world to come to them. I don't want any country rap artists. I mean, if a country rap artist crosses over, I want them to cross over because the world pulled them over. I don't want any country rap artists changing their changing their subject matter for the sake of being accepted in traditional hip hop. That's just my personal opinion on that. All right, man, let's keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. This is quickly becoming one of the most talked about guys on the show. I'm not even going to say one of the show's favorite, but we it seems like every week something by this guy is coming up that we got to talk about. So next up, y'all knowing, y'all loving, y'all helping them grow. Mr. Tom McDonald. And this week, we have a joint entitled Brainwashed. I want to start by saying, and I always mention her, and I'm going to mention her again. Shout out. Shout out to that girl, Nova Rockefeller, who is, I'm not sure if she's Tom's fiance, his wife, or his girl. But she directed his videos the same way she's directed a lot of his videos. And the one thing I can say, um, I feel like Tom makes the best of what he has when it comes to his visuals. Because I, I guarantee he doesn't put a large amount of money in them. And I'm not saying he's got $100 video shoots, but most of his videos just seem like they're shot in one spot. But they maximize that. Like this video here makes me feel like they went to the local thrift store, got a bunch of televisions, stacked them, created the created imaging on those televisions. Seems like he bought up a bunch of pieces of paper, threw them around on the floor, and shot this video. Now, I'm going to say Tom McDonald, again, he does not disappoint when it comes to the vocals because he has some real serious subject matter, some things that we need to talk about because we are being brainwashed about some of this subject matter. Now, he said something in, in the song when he talked about it's only one day for Memorial Day, but gay pride gets a whole month. Okay, that statement there made me think like, damn, that's a trip because gay pride gets a whole month and I'm not mad about that, but Memorial Day is one day for the people who who served our country. And I can see where, especially people in the military, that might offend them a little bit. But that's something we need to talk about. Now, Tom in the songs talk about defunding the media. Him and him and Mises can get the hell on with the defunding the media shit. They need to fund the media, but we're gonna move past that. But he talks about republic, you know, when people see that you're Republican, that you know, you're racist. If you're white with braids, you're a sellout. Um it's just a lot. You give me a list, and that is my issue with the video. There is a list of a grocery list of shit in this video to talk about. You can just stay in one verse, and we can break it all down. Like one stanza is enough to, to create an entire podcast off of. Like, and I'm I'm, and I didn't mean to cut your review off, but I I salute Tom for his wokeness. Um, but Tom. You're you're not preaching to the choir. You are preaching to a bunch of deaf and blind folk. They have been programmed to the point to where whatever you are telling them, you as in the person that's trying to wake them up, is bouncing off of them. So I I would probably and then this is a consensus in all of his music. He does this. And I and I would even sometimes he does a little clout chasing. Yes. And then sometimes he does stuff for a lot of shock value. Anybody with tattoos on their face, it's definitely about shock value. Um, but you are 
giving this is this is an example of giving too much information at one time because um, i this is it's a lot bro this shit is heavy real heavy on the um having to go against the system and reform society and rethink what you're being given because the information that you're given is not accurate like this is real heavy on that from from lyric one all the way to the end and I, again i commend him for it love him for it i just think it's, it's it's way too much for most folks especially the people that are in the country rap demographic to be trying to absorb all of this shit um because they ain't trying to hear it. these are the same folks that will when a black man tells them that this flag offends me and they're like, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to wait. Not even trying to sit down and figure out why it offends them. They just like, these are my feelings. I'm still going to ignore yours. This is this demographic. So him trying to teach or preach or even talk to this demographic in that sort of way is a mistake. You're wasting your breath. Well, at this point, of the, at the point of us recording the show, over 4.4 million people have viewed this video. And it's for the for the shock value, and you know, he's dropping some knowledge into the shit. Now I'm not gonna lie, but that 4.4 is the other woke white folks that support him. It's not the black folks, because black people is like, bro, especially the hip hop heads of the black folks, they don't respect him because he's a white rapper. They still on that bullshit. Like white people can't have valid contributions in hip hop. So I don't know where his core demographic is. Uh, it, obviously they support him because they watch his shit and they watch it religiously and they download his stuff because he he was when this song came out I think I still had screenshots screenshots he was number one or two and the Cardi B Lizzo record came out same weekend and them them hoes was like number one but their their record is pop his record is hip hop. I, I ain't mean to call them hoes. It's just it's it's a habit. My bad. <laughs> I I was about to say bitches, but you know <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. But he, he, either way, like they they were he they were number one on the pop charts. He was number one on the hip hop charts. But I guarantee you, he doesn't get that love with Billboard because Billboard. I, and I've seen it happen even when I was you know digging in numbers from last year up until now. Like they were charting an entire fucking week on iTunes, but when the billboard numbers come out, they're not even top 40, you know, and it's disrespectful. And I, and, and I think the billboard is doing it deliberately because it just doesn't respect the genre. And and I, you know, even in the people that I talked to over at a couple of distributors, they think that the people at Country Rap are just putting the genre specification just so they can chart. Uh, and when they listen to the music, it's not that genre. So it kind of confuses the people who are over the genre classification it's, it's just a whole bunch of bureaucratic bullshit um, but whatever the the name whatever the title is and it's listed as that specific genre that should be enough for them to put it on that chart and let it ride but that's not the case is, my question is is on the genre and as some <clears> we've been talking about since episode one there's no true definition of the genre because you still artists you still have artists out here who, who are not embracing the genre but receiving the love and being successful off the fans of the genre, you know. So I, th I, I think in order for for the for Billboard or anybody to stand up and represent, then the artist got to stand up too. Because if we talk to Tom McDonald, he'll probably say, "I ain't no country rap artist," but country rap fans are supporting the fuck out of him. And I think they're they're supporting him because of his outstanding and very. I'm against the system type voice. Now that is what country music is all about. Now you, when you add rap to that, now you got country rap and these people are using the rap voice to be against the system and speak out like that this is their voice. It's like country has been the conscience and country rap is the same thing now if you want to let it evolve into 2021 and let these younger demographics have a voice. This is their way of expressing themselves. I'm not mad at Tom McDonald for having his voice. The way that he uses it, I um, I get puzzled. And in the review of this whole song, I hated the beat. The beat was trash, um, but the video was bomb. Uh, and and like you said, Nova uses as much as she can to the best of her ability to create a quality video. 
I am not mad at that lady. Like if however you work in your thing, and if you got to get it, however means necessary, the finished result, the end result that we have seen is great quality shit. So, so salute to you for doing all of that. My issue is your husband, boyfriend, whatever it is, he is to you. I would probably say, and this is just me giving hip hop advice. Don't give too much information at once. This song is very overwhelming. This song will, this song is a class on the social ills of America. Uh, this song is a uh, pretty much a, a thesis on what is wrong with society ever since society has started. And this is from a white man's point of view. There are quite a few people that will give the same perspective from a black man's point of view, Latino, uh, LGBTQ community. Like there are people with varying perspectives that have come and we don't give them this amount of attention that Tom McDonald gets. So as he's using his platform to help promote whatever message that he's trying to convey, he needs to filter it out like piece by piece. Don't give too much. Because when you give too much, it's like, oh shit, now what? Because you're not, you're giving all of these issues, but the biggest issue when you bring up issues, we're not talking about solutions. We're only just talking about the issues. You know, and this you can't keep putting band-aids on amputations. You, eventually, you're gonna need to treat some bitch. So we, I commend him for bringing all of these band-aids up. Thank you, especially coming from a white mouth, because most of these ills need to be talked about from a white mouth. Because when we're talking about race issues and it comes from a black side, it's usually why are you bringing up the race card. Yeah. But when it's coming from a white mouth, it is very refreshing because now. We can start some honest dialect on how we can fix racism because it's coming from the other side finally, and it's being sincere. I and, and I've, I think I might have said at one time in another Tom McDonald review that he was trash, not so much trash. I think I said that he was clout chasing, and this was too much. After all of these other reviews, I understand it. You probably need to be too much because you are white. And you're speaking out about certain systems that most white folks don't want you to speak about. So, and you are trying to break the system. That in itself is is rewarding for me, but don't try and crack a system that doesn't want to be broken, fam, because that's how you end up in a ditch or end up missing or blacklisted or blackballed or whatever. I don't want any of that for you. I want you to keep going and, and making the music that you're making and doing doing it from a very sincere and honest way and then it's just putting it out there. I respect you for everything that you're doing. Um, if I've ever offended anybody over at Hangover, I apologize in, in advance of all the other negative reviews that I'm going to give because if the music is ass, I'm going to tell you it's ass. And this beat was ass. He probably should have got another Eminem beat or hell, I'll send you a beat, fam. It's all good. I got a whole stock, stockpile of them. But this beat was trash. All right. Now, I'm going to say this. Tom produced this beat himself. And the beat, to me, sound like a regurgitated Eminem beat. But you know what? The message is so powerful and the video is so dope. This shit could have been acapella to me. The, the message was too powerful, bro. I mean, it was a lot in that video, man. Like, we can break down the lyrics. Like, we can read the lyrics. And we won't finish it in an, a two-hour, three-hour podcast. Because it is very overwhelming. The amount of shit that he was talking about in this video, which is his, it, that's his skill set, though. He's a brilliant writer. Uh, you can't nobody take that from him. Uh, now, you know, you need, you need to pick better beats, though. You know, one thing we can do if we just want to do a special episode, but yeah, no need. But he does something that's very, very dope in this video that I would love for you guys to comment in the comments area. He gives nine steps that they use to control us. And when I listen, all nine of them shits were on point, bro. To the point where a lot of us might not even realize that their brainwashing is controlling us with these things. And we might not even realize it. Because I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I, right now, and a lot of you artists, and we talk about this, and I said I wasn't going to talk, but I'm going to talk a little bit. Let, let's, let, and I do want to do the nine steps, because I, I got rebuttals to it. But yes, let's do that. No, I don't have, I, I can't do nine steps today because I don't have my all jotted no, down. No, no, not, not right now. We should make that a whole nother podcast. Okay, we can, do a, we can do a show on that. We can do a show on that. All right, but the one thing that I want to say that the world and, and 
that we use are things that brainwash us. Everyone says this is the land of the free. But have you realized how offended people get when you are a free thinker and you don't think like them? Right. And if I haven't seen anything to divide our country, if I haven't seen in my years on earth, COVID-19 has divided our country almost more than anything I've seen to the point where you got artists calling people cowards for getting vaccinations. You got artists saying they're not going to perform if people wear masks. Like, hey, man, if a person wants to get vaccinated, that's their choice. And if they choose not to, that's their choice. I don't really understand why we're allowing this pandemic to divide us in such a manner that one person has to look weak and inferior because of their choice. Sure. And that one thing there fits into one, those nine steps. Like, you know what? If you feel the way you feel, feel it. You ain't got to turn no camera on. You ain't got to make a post or a broadcast or try to use your influence. Like, you know what? If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's on you. Why do you got to influence another person not to get vaccinated? And what if that person who listens to you don't get vaccinated and die? Oh, what if they get vaccinated and die? I'm saying, don't take on the burden of the world by your opinion sometimes, because this is a very serious situation. And sometimes I feel like it's causing more division than curing. Right. And that within, that to me, I hate seeing some of my favorite artists say the way they feel about COVID-19 vaccinations and masks. I just really don't want to hear it. I want to hear the music, bro. Y'all not, y'all do that politics shit. We ain't got to have the politics in your videos and your music, but that's just my personal opinion. That's bro, there, there is a very good reason. And you just gave an example of why. I only listen to the music. I don't, I don't dive into nobody's personal nothing no more. Like when you bring shit up to me, that is when I know about it because I'm, I don't, I might follow somebody on social media, but I don't, no, nah, I ain't even, I follow them because I have to because of the show, but I don't follow you motherfuckers. Like I'm not going down my timeline. Oh, let me see what such and such did today. That is not happening with me. Like I, I, I'm, because there's going to be some shit that's going to be in the background or you might do and say something that's slick. And you might not even know it offends me, but then I don't want to get enough, get a, I don't want to get in my feelings because now you've offended me and you didn't even know you offended me, but you've done it. And now I'm mad, but I'm mad because I'm mad. I'm, and you don't know that I'm mad. And now I'm going to look at you a certain way. And I don't want to get like that about anybody. So I just don't follow anybody. I don't get in any of that business. When you bring it up, fine, we'll talk about it, but ain't no, ain't no research, not like that. Uh, and and I, I, it's it's very very good, especially in this genre. Because if the moment I start seeing them damn flags, like you know, I'm already on guard. Like okay, I, I know, I know what you're thinking. But I, I could try to keep it away, <laughs> you know, to, to uh, keep my ass away so I don't be judgmental and and already have some sort of preconceived notion of what you think or how you view me. It's probably the best way that I can be about it. All right. Well, last thing on Tom McDonald brainwashing. The record at the filming of this video has been number one for an entire week on iTunes hip hop chart. That's the longest number one Tom McDonald has had in his career. So hopefully y'all keep watching, keep downloading, keep listening, and he'll keep winning. The numbers, I'm not going to look them up because I can use my phone now, now that I'm recording on the laptop. When I did a screenshot, Tom had, and I can show the screenshot. Um, can you see that? Yeah. You see the um 578. It's already gold. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That was a five. That's 578. That means. Oh, in the last 24 is, hours. Okay. Yeah. These are sales within the last 24 hours. But this is when he, I'm not sure what date it was. Let me look at my camera and see what day it was. Sunday. Um, so last Sunday, he had he had overtaken them at number one for that slot. And then that was the last. That's the only one that I had. But this was this is the chart. Also took the chart pictures just so I ain't, no one can say that I'm trying to fabricate shit or Photoshop some shit. 
like this is the actual chart and the numbers that you just saw on there. This is a site where you can go and look at the back end of what sells on iTunes. And it's an all chart. It doesn't break it down by genre, but you'd have to go and look on the genre and then pull the numbers off for whoever does it. And I, and I used to do this for clients that were trying to sell iTunes downloads and trying to chart. Well, Tom's numbers, pretty generous, it's about 500 a day. 500 a day ain't bad. Um, that ain't going to get you gold but it'll at least get you charted. And if he does it consistently enough, then he'll at least get a decent billboard chart. And I don't know if you're going to get billboard number one for rap. Uh, well, we know it won't be Cardi B and Lizzo because they're pop. Um, so you know, hopefully he does. Like, he, he deserves it. He, he deserves everything. That he's All of the limelight and spotlight that he's shooting for, like, keep doing it. Keep, keep doing your thing and keep having your voice. Keep speaking it. Like, your truth is your truth. Put it out there. Yeah, and like I say, there are a lot of lessons to be learned from this music. If we just open our minds, you know. And I always say, man, Misha said the smartest thing. Hip hop is culture, not color. And I don't, I say it all the time, man, let's not use this music to create separatism. And that's on either side. Uh, yeah, and I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear, and, I, and I love you for it. You're my brother. But, but this, this, especially over here, Nah, fam. Nah, fam. As much as we try and we try to be as open and honest and keep the dialect open, like we can be cool. And as soon as that camera go off, whoever we interviewing or whoever we talking to, they're right back to their shit. And that's just the country living, you know, and some of that shit offends us. And I'm talking about us as a race. Uh, but it's just how they are. It's how they were raised. And I don't, and I don't think that they're doing it to be racist. It's just that that's just their way of living. And I'm not mad at that. I respect that. If not, I would not be reviewing country rap. You know, it, I'm I'm coming and adding my music expertise to this genre to help elevate it. <laughs> aside right. from the country level, the, the, the fucking flag that offends me, aside from that, I'm still here doing whatever I got to do. All right. We'll keep it pushing. Next up, new artist to the show. He goes by the name of Bubby Galloway. And this is Huh? Fuck Bobby. Fuck Bobby. You see his perfect beard? Fuck this motherfucker. Fuck it. Fuck Bobby. <laughs> Bobby got a temple fade with the beard. Fuck Bobby. I am not rocking with Bobby for it. Hold on, let me let Cut me tell you. Shit off. <laughs> what made me even what made me even jump on this thing was Bobby got Jelly Roll out here rapping again. I know, right? Thank like, you, The Thank only you. the only song. That have, and maybe I'm wrong. Y'all can drop it in here. The only song in 2021 that's came on my board of Jelly Roll rapping of him and Andrew Schultz, which we did not review because Andrew Schultz is a comedian. I wish we had a reviewed it because then we reviewed Ginger Billy. But right. Jelly Roll ain't been out here rapping, bro. He ain't been out here making videos. Jelly Roll out here getting that show money. And I ain't mad at him. But Bubby drug Jelly Roll out. All right. Let me say this. And I said this about Trap House Coda. Boy, if Bubby Galloway don't make me think of Rob Wave or <laughs> right, even more so than Trap House Coda, but it's it's okay because I really, I am really into that 2021 vibe. I'm into the singing, rapping thing. Matter of fact, we talk about the country, the females of country rap. They need to get the Bubby Galloway, the Trap House Coda blueprint and do that for the ladies because right. bro yes fuck bubby because bubby is too goddamn smooth i had looking like john b with the matching hat right. the matching guy bobby you killing them boy you killing them we hate oh, bubby bobby bobby got on a motherfucking fresh ass turtleneck bro that shit is freshly folded down right, like 1980 right. goddamn seven man one time with bubby galloway I really, really like the video. The video was done by, um, I'm actually not sure who the video was done by, but I really, really like the rap singing style he got. And this video is not what you expect from country rap. But he definitely have country rap roots to go get Jelly Roll on this record. He's talking about, bro, he's talking about basically 
He's one of the few artists I've heard mention COVID in a song. He mentions really? COVID in a song, so he's not afraid to tackle that. He's talking about lost love. And then my man Jelly Roll comes in. He just comes in with a typical Jelly Roll type story. So to me, man, this almost was a perfect song. I didn't really like the... I mean, it was nothing wrong with the video. I just didn't like how I, there was parts that made me feel like they were standing in front of some type of podiums or something. It made me think of the old school picture man. You know how you go okay, to the book? That, that makes sense. It made me think of the yeah, picture man. They should have just posed. Well, when the when the rap out was happening with Jelly, it was probably a set that felt like that. So yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, but you know, I was cool. Jelly got the fresh ass Jordan zone. He gives us what Jelly gives us, but I think <clears throat> Bubby outstyled him. So like wardrobe wise, yes. Outstyled him. I'm somebody style. I'm styling on you. Styling on you don't just mean my. His swag, his he outstyled him. He did not rhyme him, but he outstyled him. No, sir. You're not outstyling Jelly Roll, fam. Jelly came with classic Jelly shit, like dope yeah. boy shit. Um, and you you got to respect that. But Bubby was, but they they were two different worlds. Like John B was over here, you know, with his smooth ass vocals, uh, and his perfect fucking beard. Like he was doing his thing. Like I'm not mad at him. And then Jelly came in and just hit you with the featured rap. Uh, that 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 knocked you in the face, you know, Fat Joe style. Like I'm 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 feeling the record. Uh, I didn't. It was dope beat, great production, lyrics and flows all around. Like it, the rap flows, the singing flows. Um, there wasn't anything negative to say about the record because the vocals, the, they had to layer his vocals, and even when he was playing with some auto tuning. Like all of that shit was perfect. Like whoever did this shit, there was it was a one. They spent time on getting this right. And even when Jelly came in and it was rapping and his vocals are a little bit different than uh, Bubby's vocals, they still got Jelly's vocals right because this is a complete contrast. Because Bubby's you know a little nasally with the singing, and then Jelly came in with a with a deeper voice, and it was just perfect. Good job on the video. Now, I, I, there was some scenes in there when he had the lights on the ground. I was like, I don't know if I would do that, fam. But then I saw he was up in the air a little bit more, and he got a little different perspective. And I said, okay, now I see why you did that, because the end result was that those shots. But it was a great show. Great video, great song, great presentation. And this is, this is initially, this wasn't even a song that we were going to review off of Bubby. We were going to do Call on God. Uh, and I went and watched that one. And I was like, okay, let me check and see what else he got, because I'm feeling this dude. You know, and then I saw this, he had a song with Jelly Roll, and then I sent that video over, and I was like, yeah, I'd rather do this one instead of doing the other one, because, you know, not like we're going to give you a bad review on Call on God, but it's fucking Jelly Roll. <laughs> we, we've been wanting to get some raps and shit from Jelly Roll since fucking January, and, you know, so thank you very much for, for enabling the whole genre to hear him rap again. Uh, thank you very, very, very much. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of that beard. I'm jealous as fuck. Uh, and 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 I I hope you you hope you start going great like right around here around the temple first and and that would make me feel a whole lot better. But this is a good effort, good effort. Hopefully we can hear more from. Him. Yeah, because you know if he great out here, he gonna style that shit and still be looking good. <laughs> right, right. John be looking at him. go yeah. somewhere with that. I hope I hope I hope I hope he grow. I hope he go gray and patch it. Like get a gray <laughs> patch there and like a gray patch there. On some offset <laughs> shit, like what the fuck is going on? But yeah, man, he definitely looked like John B. And um, if Bubby ain't doing nothing, he probably hitting some of y'all later. <laughs> I mean, I'm just yeah. saying, if he's that type of guy, if he's that type of guy. Um, and man, when I checked him out, this is the sad part. The guy came up with a record this dope, and he has less than four thousand followers on the gram. What are y'all doing? Why are y'all not following Bubby? And Bubby, why do you only have twenty seven posts? Yeah, you got to be more active. That's what now, that is. The question I ask is, because it says hip-hop artist, producer, and songwriter. I definitely need to know that Bubby produces his track, and when it says songwriter, he out here writing R&B songs. Like, let me find out this goddamn John B's son. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> let me find out the B in John B stood for Bubby. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still down for me now? Hey man, but really dope song, dope song. But you know what I like? Jelly Roll, you ain't slick. You ain't slick, Jelly Roll. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. 
So you keep giving us these general songs that you singing. But every time you on that feature, you rap it. Jelly Roll rap with Andrew Schultz. He rap with Bubby Galloway. And he rap with FJ Outlaw. You ain't slick, Jelly. You still want these young guys to know that you'll bust their ass on their mic. I see what you're doing. Maybe Adam's going to follow the same formula, you think? I don't know. I don't know. I just need Jelly. You know, Jelly out here on a major tour. So I don't even know if there'll be a project coming considering he dropped four last year. But I do want to be able to review more Jelly stuff. So hopefully he'll hit us with a couple of them hot things before the end of the year. But if he keep doing features like this, he'll be as relevant and he can take a year off from recording just to tour and just drop features because he hasn't let us down on any feature. That's true. That's he hasn't true. let us down. All right, man. Last video of the day. God dang. Why do we pack all these in this show? Bro, I told you this is the best show. This 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 show got some heat. <laughs> if y'all haven't downloaded all the videos, if y'all haven't either checked out the country rap tunes playlist on YouTube to watch these videos, or if y'all had not add these songs to your Spotify playlist, you sleep. All right, last up. Let me, can I start first? Let me go first. Yeah, you can start. Let me let me introduce it then. You can. You can. Uh, all right. <laughs> last up. A guy who's just inching, inching, inching on up there on my top 10 list, which this list is going to be, I'm scared to make my top 10 list at this point, I'm going to be honest. That's why I don't even talk about it. But a guy who's definitely inching and putting that work in, putting that work in on your mug ass, Austin <laughs> Tolliver. And the name of this joint is Lifestyle featuring the OG. Cole Ford. All right? You can get it. Okay. Nelly. I'm, I'm talking to you, Nelly. You, Austin Tolliver. Nelly. Fam, you know damn well this is not an official video. And how you how you trolled me into saying an official video was coming. And then I click on this thing. I say, oh, okay, this is my favorite song from Mud Digger. Okay. Let me go peep this shit out. No. Nah. This ain't an official video, bro. This is a a compilation of uh, highlights that you you and Colt have done while y'all are out on shows. Now, you got me on that one, fam. You got me on that one. I'm a little mad, just a little bit, not a lot. I'm only a little mad because, again, this is my favorite song, and I wanted y'all to just put a video out. So, And then, and then at first, after I heard Mud Diggers, I was like, okay, I want to, I, I got to see this video. You know, and then uh, there were a couple others leaked out here and there, and I was in, I was still mad because I wasn't really following the progression of the project. But I'm assuming this is probably going to be the last video from the project because, you know, it's been two months now, you know, since the initial project came out, and now this is out. This is still my favorite song, even though this is not an official video. Uh, I'm not going to be mad at you, Nelly, but don't get me like this again because this is this is I'm going to give you this one pass. Uh, uh, of psyching me out of saying that this is an official video and then when we look at it, it is not. Uh, but again, I think I said this. No, we didn't even go over a complete review of Mutt Diggers. The female in the background of the song has a very, very nice touch. And I don't know if that is your voice and they just auto tune the fuck out of it just so to make it high. But I, I that, that female that is singing in there, I'm going to give it to a female because I don't think they're going to do your voice like that. Very nice touch for to, to balance your voice and hers to put it somewhere in the middle. I like the again the, the hook got me. Um, I was not mad at that for sure. Life I live, I, I don't even sing on shit like that, you know. I especially, especially try not to sing on camera, but it was one of the one of my favorite hooks off of the entire compilation. Uh, it's probably one of the two songs that I actually sang or remembered after I stopped listening to the compilation. Uh, this one and the other one from Cannon Banyan with TJ Free. Uh, Colt Ford, I don't, Colt, you need to drop an album or something soon, fam, because you, you, you still got it and it's been decades. Uh, and, and you are the OG OG, like the, the triple OG double OG uh, of, of the genre. You definitely need to be dropping more work to put out here just to keep these young folks in check that I still got it and y'all better recognize it. As far as the young folks, Austin Tolliver 
is a part of that new generation that is coming about and trying to take some of that space from Colt Ford. But this was a perfect marriage between older generation and younger generation. Great song, great vibe. Hated the video. Thanks, Austin. But it was a great, great effort. I, I really do need to see these two. If I if I got a compilation album, no, a collaboration album with just these two, I would not be mad. At that would be perfect. Because Austin can also sing. And I haven't really heard Colt Sing Sing, but I'm mean, hopefully he's not trying to. But the raps are still there, and so is Austin's. It was a great song. I liked it. All right, I'm gonna say this because Austin Tolliver is on Average Joe, and we know um, Colt 45, Colt 45, Colt Ford, <laughs> Colt Ford. My mind's on drinking. Colt Ford, <laughs> Colt Ford definitely um, was part of the original launching of. Average Joe, if he's not the owner and CEO, I'm not sure. But with Austin being there, it lets me know that Colt either has some great a r ears or someone over there has some a r ears because Colt was very, very smart to hitch the Average Joe train up to Austin or vice versa. However they made their marriage, it was dope. Um, right. I agree. Austin, you got me because this was just footage of things you guys have done on stage. But I you know what? I wasn't mad at it because I often wonder how hard is it for someone to put together this type of video? Because it, it looked good. It was clean. It didn't bother me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. wasn't an official video. This was like this was like the promo reel that we'll watch as we're waiting for the artists to come on stage or some shit. But again, I wasn't mad at it. I'm sure it didn't cost as much as filming a video would. Um, and you know what, Colt? I ain't even mad. Colt, see, I got your girl on top of me. <laughs> you can have her. Come get her. <laughs> How, old right How old is she, Colt? How old is she, Colt? How old are you, Colt? I don't oh, know why. Dude. I would not respect <laughs> Curtis Blow for saying, I got your girl on top of me. So right. when I heard Colt Ford say it, say it I was like, Colt, oh, my goddamn my grandma goodness. on top of you. <laughs> Is he probably do all that, Colt? We can do the old jokes now. Like, Coke, can you even still get it up? You need the Viagra. Like, come on, Coke. Come on, fam. She might be on top of you. What y'all doing? Y'all just, y'all just hugging. Y'all hunching. <laughs> oh, if she's on top of you, is she sitting on top of your belly? Because, you know, you kind of, <laughs> Coke, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of out there. You kind of out there, Coke. You kind of out there a little bit. Bro, it's all love, Colt. Don't don't come at us in the wrong way, because this is not. It, we we love you. We, you are a living legend. This is all respect, fam. Oh yeah, I'm Colt. Shit, who Colt? It's me too. I'm a granddad. I got somebody <laughs> girl on top of me, Colt. So I ain't mad at it. Represent for all the OGs, Colt. And you know what? I'm gonna revert back to the episode you guys watched before this one. Spank on making some comments. About another OG, Lenny Cooper. Lenny Cooper, yes, yes. And Spank said that he think Colt would get in Lenny's ass. Yeah, without Pause. a doubt. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Colt, this verse made me goddamn. I don't, I don't know, Colt. I, I need to hear a Lenny Cooper Colt song. But then I don't know because I don't think, I don't know how that will work. But when I take Lenny Cooper and Hozier, Right. Colt 45 and Austin. You said Colt 45 again. <laughs> Colt 45 and Nelly. <laughs> Colt 45 plus 10. No. Um, <laughs> when I take these, when I take the two and they're both OGs, I don't know, man. I'm a, I, I, I questioned you last episode, but I don't know. This song made me, and, and I think this song is probably older. Mm. And again, mm. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Austin, you are a very talented dude, my G. You yeah, are man. Austin. If Average Joe don't butt, I know Average Joe's just murdered with 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 Mako. I know they probably put a little chump of change to the side, but Average Joe, if y'all don't bust that damn bank open and push this boy Austin Top, man, this kid looks good. His beard, he's got the second best beard in the game next to Bubby Galloway. <laughs> Man, his tattoos look like every time I see him, he look like he just got tattooed. That, like, 
Austin Tolliver is the sex symbol of the genre. He you know we can. The only reason a girl is on top of Coke because there's too many girls on top of Austin. She fell off. Coke, no Coke in the leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Coach, you know Austin? Okay, here we go. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, like, Austin Tolliver, bro, is a goddamn star. Yeah. What's that about? Do not fumble the bag with Austin Tolliver. We're not calling him Nelly. Bullshit, and we're calling him Nelly because he has everything Nelly had. As a matter of fact, Nelly, you dip shit. Why did you not get Austin Tolliver on a joint for your country rap joint that you got coming? Nelly should mm-hmm. Nelly should have went and got Austin, man. He probably should have, but I don't. I don't. You, you don't want to throw somebody on the same record as you that's going to be a threat. And Austin definitely is the could be the second coming of what Nelly was. Yeah. And still is, because Nelly still got it. But Austin Tolliver, you hit it on the head. Like they gotta they gotta do something over there. Like you got enough minds and brains now that you got Mako's uh and Gator and his like I I wasn't gonna call him yeah, I call him a genius at certain things. Gator and what what he does and the machine that already is average shows, like if you merge those two and you work on a solid plan with Austin Tolliver, this this shit is we're talking about not just country rap. We're talking about like pop. Like this guy is that guy. You know what I, I don't need? know why talking this. You know what that? I need to see? Since that we they these labels just got in bed to do something. Uh-huh. Before anything goes left, I'm not saying that it will, or not hoping that it will. But while they're married, right? I need to see Austin Tolliver and Savannah Dex on one of the real sexy sexes. I'm yeah, talking about Austin. It gotta be sexy. It can't be. Yeah, no party, no party. It's got to be sexy. Yeah, I'm talking about. I need, I need, and this is a little. Y'all can do some research. I need Savannah Dexter and Austin Tolliver to recreate Fire and Desire country rap version. And if y'all don't know, if you want to Google it, Fire and Desire was Rick James and Tina Marie. They, they, they might be. They're gonna have to Google that one because <laughs> that's a little bit out of their genre. But yeah, yeah, that that would that would be perfect. That's and their pleasure and pain. They, both of them now. If Savannah's still going on the same trajectory that she was with Country Girl, and if Austin can lean away from the party shit and just come and be sexy, you know, for a couple projects, you know, use use the sex appeal and throw it out there. You you will open up a completely different demographic. No one else is touching. I think maybe Anthony Bismo might have tried to touch it in certain videos, but he hadn't been consistent enough. If you wanted to go that route and he could be the ladies' man, the, L- the LL Cool J look, um, Nelly body, um, Nelly finesse and style, like all of that you can do. Nelly, Nelly, Nelly wasn't a bad looking guy back in the day. Hell, he still looks the same age, like he's just cloned himself. Like all of this could work for Austin Tolliver. Be that guy too, and I, and I don't know who we need to talk to over there. Average shows to make this shit happen, but it needs to happen because he is his talent. You have a world talent right there in this one guy. He could be funding the fucking label for generations. Just that one guy. We ain't talking about nobody else. Just him. If you just focused on him for a solid year and put all of your ducks into that, like this, it, this is the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. All right, man. The lifestyle joint, like I said, and it was my favorite joint off that Mud Diggers 12 too. We didn't get a chance to review it, but it was my favorite joint. Austin Tyler was a star. Um, I probably would have dropped it first. It would have probably set it off. But dropping it last, if this is last on the run for Mud Digger 12, I ain't mad. Hopefully, this is a setup for Austin Tolliver project. Hopefully. Hopefully. And um, hopefully we man, hopefully we can, you know, make that real sexy, 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 you know, get in the comments area. Say so we need something sexy from Savannah Dexter and Austin Tolliver. We can't tag her. We can't tag her, so y'all got to tag her for us. We, we need to get an Austin Tolliver interview. Like, for real, for real. Before he gets too big and he they don't want to even deal with us, like, I, we really do need to get him in just to pick his brain, like, see what his direction is. Maybe even give him some advice to which go here, go here, or do this to do that. Like, 
I, I'm intrigued on what their plans are over there with him. All right, man. Hey, man, just gave y'all four videos. Let's go over them real quick. Quick recap. We started that thing, everything off with Trap House Coda, Old Silverado. Banger. Still smoking on gelato. Have you ever got <laughs> hit in an old Silverado? All right. that his girl in the video? You think that was his real girl? If it ain't, he need to make her his girl. Like, she was sexy, and then she had, she had a little 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 nip action, almost trying to show. Don't get me. slapped. I don't know slapped. you're right. You, you're right. I, I'm just calling it out. I'm not saying I I want to do anything inappropriate. I'm just saying she she had a good look. Girl, if it was his girl or not, she was a perfect model for sure. Okay, well, but you noticed nip. I've never noticed no nip. I, I she in the yeah, fam. It was like poke. It was poking out. Just peek, peek right here. Just poking. Hey. <laughs> Next up, we had to me. Um, it's gonna be hard to find a, a, a more better written song in 2021 than the next joint, which was Tom McDonald Brainwash. Very, very well written. That song, you guys might see a episode dedicated to those nine steps that we're being brainwashed. And y'all gonna be like, well, goddamn, the song been out over a month. But those nine things, we might just have to do a, a expose or something just to talk about it because I think he touched on some shit that a lot of you guys are afraid to. Matter of fact, a lot of you guys, I don't even know if I believe your views. I don't even know. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'll just ride in the wave because it's cool to think that way. And Tom is going left. Huh? I, I, I don't even think a lot of them believe their views. They're doing it to sell records. Yeah. Because some of y'all views don't line up with the music y'all grew up on. What the fuck were y'all doing listening to rap if y'all was feeling that way? That, but I'm gonna keep pushing. I'm gonna keep it pushing. I'm gonna keep it pushing. True that, true that. All right, true. next up we had Bubby Galloway featuring the great Jelly Roll with Mind Racing. And last we had Austin Tolliver featuring the OG Coke Ford with Lifestyle. Austin, you got us real good, buddy. You got us good <laughs> on that official video. But I guess this is the official video. It just ain't a video video. Right, right. <laughs> it ain't an action video. It wasn't, you weren't there when they put it all together. Like, get that, get that, and we got it. But again, man, I don't know how in the hell we got these four awesome songs on one show. But we did. Yeah. We did. You know, in this whole show, the only, the worst things we said was one song didn't have a second verse. Right. Um, right. One guy got a perfect beard. Yes. Fuck you, Bobby. And one was an official video. Other than that, we didn't find anything that needed major fixing. Right. And this, and this, the, the genre is elevating. Yeah. I guess because these are not all heavy hitters. Like Tom McDonald might be considered one, but there, everybody else, these are somewhat new. I mean, Trap House Coda could be a rookie of the year. Yeah, like definitely. if you want to just throw it out there. And, and, and Austin Tolliver is just trying to be consistent, throwing product out there. I don't know why he did the video that way. Because he hadn't dropped the video in a minute and he wanted to stay relevant. And it, it, Average Joe's did it to promote the project that was slow about putting other videos for the project. So I get it. I understand all of it. Just the business side of it. I understand it. I'm not tripping on y'all Average Joe's. I'm not. Because I know I go at y'all a lot about treatments and how you treat a record and promote it with advertising and marketing and branding, et cetera, et cetera. It's just me giving you my professional critique, nothing negative. All right. All right, man, that's all I got. Y'all please visit www.countryratreport.com for all your country rap report needs, period, point yeah. blank. This is your boy Vic XL. This should do Spank. And um, we'll see y'all next time, all right? Peace.